Heathcliff died. Well, many of us have felt for a long time that the church has been concentrating on various divisive issues and in doing so has neglected several fundamental management matters. Of course, first among them must unfortunately be its finances and we happen to live in a benefice in which the church commissioners have currently just sold off a lot of uh, the land uh, that they've owned, obviously, for centuries. And uh, that, again, makes one wonder what's going on. And then another of the major items, as has already been mentioned, is the recruitment of ordinands. And even since our last meeting, I've heard of 20-plus ordinands presenting themselves in East Anglia, and only three of whom were accepted. Um, and then some of you know Nigel Hale, for instance, who is a thoroughly splendid person, and he will tell you what a problem he had in being accepted as a, as a lay preacher. Yeah, he's all day. He's all day now, but he had a tremendous mm. job being accepted mm. in the first place at all. So the whole system seems um, wrong. Well now, we are faced with this great problem because John is unfortunately leaving us in January and some of us put together this possible letter which might come from the, the church wardens of the four parishes and I'll just read it to you because it sums up, I think, the, the whole problem. Sir, what is happening to the Church of England? The Venna 2020 report tells us that full-time clergy in the Canterbury Diocese are to be approximately halved by 2020. An example of this is that it is proposed that the rector of the Littlebourne benefice of four lively parishes will be replaced by an unpaid three days a week house for duty priest when he retires in January 2010. How can anybody possibly carry out in three days the services in four churches, the widespread visiting for bereavement, marriages, christenings, and other time-consuming pastoral matters, to say nothing of PCC meetings, promoting Lenten and other courses, writing service sheets and the village's magazine, and playing a part in, and preferably governing, the two church schools in this benefice. We are told the reasons for this are A, a shortage of finance, and B, a shortage <coughs> of ordinance. As we pay our rector's stipend and pension in full as part of our parish share, the first argument is a myth. Furthermore, our local archdeacon who controls these matters made the extraordinary remark that even if we raise one million pounds, we would not be allowed a full-time rector. On the second point, no wonder what looks like a dying and divided church is failing to attract ordinands. Is there no management structure, preferably lay, within the Church of England to address this problem of recruitment, both directly and through school and university chaplains? Are those who do come forward receiving encouragement from their bishops, selection committees, and from their theological colleges? We know there are problems over clergy pensions, as with many other pension funds, but with the church's immense wealth, there is nothing that could not be solved by alternative, efficient financial management. For a start, they would cut back on administrative expenditure, uncommercial building and restoration practices, and on too many bishops and cathedral clergy living remarkably comfortably. Let some of them get out into the many rural parishes which, like our own, are under threat of survival. Meanwhile, let us have the full-time rector we are paying for, and who would gladly come to us, instead of adding to the impression of a church whose principal task seems to be the management of decline. Yours faithfully.